So today, Apple has released iOS 13.4. Now, this is the official version. Last week, Apple dropped iOS 13.4 GM, which is called the Golden Master version. This is for specifically software developers who want to create their apps around the uh, kind of finished product of iOS 13.4. So if you guys are on the GM version, there's pretty much no difference to what you're seeing now on the official release. You will just need to get rid of that developer beta profile if you have that installed uh, to get the official release. But if you guys are coming from maybe a public beta or maybe you're coming from iOS 13.3.1, this is available over the air through the software update page. Now, iOS 13.4 is quite a significant update simply because it is likely the last major version of iOS 13 that we'll be seeing. We've never seen a 0.5 of any iOS version. Apple may correct that this year, but Till now, we really haven't seen anything like that. So iOS 13.4 is likely the last major version of iOS 13 that we're seeing. And this is a very uh, significant update simply because on the speed and performance side of things, we want to make sure that things are working top notch before we move on to iOS 14. So let's go ahead, dive into iOS 13.4. In today's video, I'm going to give you kind of the top five things that have changed within iOS 13.4. If you wanna see all of the minor changes that have been made, including the ones we'll be talking about today, uh, go and watch my previous video where I kind of showed that on the GM version. But let's go ahead and see what's new in iOS 13.4. And then in a little bit, we'll talk about if you guys should be updating to iOS 13.4. Okay, so we have the iOS 13.4 update loaded up on this iPhone 11 Pro Max. For me, the update size was just around three to four gigabytes. So uh, depending on your device, the uh, build will be larger or smaller, but it's not that big of a build and it doesn't eat up too much space on your device. But let's go ahead and share with you guys um, some more information about this update. Um, so obviously a new software version, iOS 13.4. And then if we go down into the build number, we have a new build number of 17E255. So that is your new build number. And if we go a little bit farther down into this menu, this is actually our first major change that we saw within this update. So we have new modem firmware. Uh, the modem firmware for this version of iOS is 1.05.28. Now, if you guys have a different device, maybe you have an iPhone 8, 8 Plus, or any other device other than an iPhone 11 Pro Max, uh, you will have a different modem firmware. So just be aware of that. If you guys have a different modem firmware, don't freak out, it's just because you have a totally different device, any different modem installed. Um, so the modem firmware 1.05.28 will be a lot better for LTE connectivity, maintaining certain speeds, and also giving you better connectivity. So what I mean by that is that you probably won't be experiencing those LTE dropouts. You'll have better, more consistent internet. And then also your calling may see an improvement as far as call quality and then also range as well. Okay, so the next major feature that we're seeing here at iOS 13.4 is mouse support for the iPad. So if you have an iPad or iPad Pro, you can now connect a mouse and use it seamlessly with iOS 13.4 and your device. Previously, it was strictly a, a kind of accessibility feature, wasn't really fully supported, there's a lot of bugs, and the experience was less than enjoyable. But now in iOS 13.4, using a mouse is actually a really great experience and only pushes users more towards kind of switching over from a laptop or a desktop PC or Mac and switching over fully to the iPad simply because you can use it just like any other device. Now for mouse support, you have a new cursor. You can go ahead and customize the cursor and its settings. You can also customize the button controls if you have a mouse that has multiple buttons on it. It's actually really easy to do all through the settings app. There's a few other settings that you can change for mouse support. So definitely take a look if you want to go ahead and use this feature. It's definitely something that I would recommend taking a look at if you own an iPad, because it might just be that one thing that'll make you switch over from a traditional computer going fully over to an iPad, making it your full-time productivity tool. Now, next up, we're seeing new Memoji stickers. And while this might not be the most fascinating thing that we're seeing in iOS 13.4, it's definitely important because Apple continues to develop this feature. So Memoji support has added things like um, you reading a MacBook, um, different faces and different expressions on Memoji. 
So this is a good update. Hopefully Apple is continuing to make new Memoji and Animoji features in the near future, um, but we'll definitely be seeing some new emoji uh, in the near future, simply because Apple did release that they would be putting new emoji that will likely be coming in iOS 14. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and enjoy these Memoji stickers. You can place these into your iMessage messages and they're just a little something fun to play with within iMessage and iOS 13.4. Now, if you guys have an um, AirPod or AirPod Pro device, I noticed that specifically with AirPod Pros, you have better connectivity when uh, initially connecting to your iPhone. Um, so before in previous updates, the update was kind of slow um, as far as connectivity goes. So from the moment of opening the AirPods Pro device to it actually connecting to your phone or iPad, uh, it was kind of slow, to be honest. So now in iOS 13.4 throughout the betas and then now on the official release, we're actually seeing a lot better loading times as far as connectivity. So it seems like Apple has greatly improved the connectivity between AirPods Pro devices and your main device like your iPad or iPhone. So the last major feature that we'll go over has to do with the Apple TV app and the settings that you can change within the settings app. So if you go into the Apple TV app settings, um, you now have different options for streaming and download. So you can, of course, use cellular data for streaming. Um, so if you go into cellular options here, you have high quality, which uses a lot more data when streaming, or you can go to the data saver plan, which will stream up to 600 megabytes per hour. So you can go ahead and select that for your streaming options. And then you have streaming options for Wi-Fi as well. Um, so for Wi-Fi, they've saved the data saver plan to uh, basically one gigabyte per hour since you're on Wi-Fi. So if you have any connectivity limits through Wi-Fi, um, that has been raised to one gigabyte, but it's a lot better than the 800 megabyte or 600 megabyte limit that you had through cellular. Now you also have these uh, kind of similar options on download options. So if you activate use cellular data on download, you, that now opens the cellular menu. So you can have fast downloads, so faster download and it uses less storage, or you can have a more high quality download, which is a little bit slower, but uses a lot more storage because you're getting a lot more data because it is in a higher quality. So now you have the option to do that on Wi-Fi as well. Um, so you have very similar uh, kind of options there. I don't see why that would really affect um, Wi-Fi as much as it would cellular, but you can of course change those options within the settings app here. And then audio lang languages, this was here before. Of course, you can mess with those settings should you choose to do so. Okay, so those were some of the new features and changes that we found within iOS 13.4. Let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite new feature or change brought to iOS 13.4. One other change that has been brought to iOS 13.4 is new wallpapers, specifically for the new iPads that were just released last week from Apple. So if you want those new wallpapers, maybe you want to install them onto your iPhone or any other device, I'll have a link down below to where you can pick those up and download them for yourself. But let's move on to speed and performance. Speed and performance is always a big topic when it comes to iOS updates, but specifically for iOS 13.4, since it's, this is the last update that we'll likely be seeing for iOS 13, uh, we definitely want to make sure that it is a solid update before we move on into iOS 14 betas. We might be seeing subsequential updates of iOS 13.4.1, um, 0.2 for bug fixes, um, security patches, everything like that, but they won't bring any new features or major performance changes. But let's get on to speed and performance. As I said in my GM version video, speed and performance is definitely on the rise here, and it's actually something that you can visually see in regards to graphics performance. So graphics performance is quite high here in iOS 13.4, even on older devices. You can see that between iOS 13.3.1 and 13.4, there's a visual uh, kind of speed improvement. So you can actually see the speed. Um, everything is working throughout the UI a lot faster in iOS 13.4. So that's really nice to see. Performance wise, um, like let's say CPU performance and battery performance working hand in hand, um, how is that going? Well, battery performance, I would say, has not changed for older devices. But if you have an iPhone 8, 8 Plus or newer, your battery performance is going to go up depending on which device you have, maybe like 3 to 5%. That is fully dependent on what device you have, but 
And that's a pretty significant update uh, given this is a software update and you get more battery life uh, for your devices. Now, if you have older devices, I can't really guarantee that you'll see any difference. I definitely didn't see that things were hurting the battery life, but I didn't see an improvement either. So your mileage may vary with uh, this update on older devices, but for older devices, you're still getting really good performance, still really good battery life. And if you guys are maybe going to get phased out in iOS 14, this is kind of a great update to um, end up on should you not want to get to iOS 14 or can't get to iOS 14 in the future. So guys, that was speed and performance and battery life. Should you guys be updating to iOS 13.4? Well, last week I said maybe hold off a little bit just because you want to make sure that there's no major bugs or anything like that within this update that might affect your device. Now, the GM version is literally the same build as the official release. Very rarely do we see any changes with the builds between the GM release and the official release. So with that said, I've had a full week with iOS 13.4, the official version, and so far I'm not finding any major bugs or kind of big quirks to iOS 13.4 that would make me say, don't download this update. I've also been monitoring other people's responses uh, to this update and how that's working for them. And so far I haven't seen anything negative to the point where you know, they would recommend that you not update your device. So as far as an iOS 13.4 update, I do recommend that you update. There's a lot of new features to check out. You can check out my previous videos to see all of the new features, but in this update, I showed you quite a few of them. So those new features are definitely a highlight and you're getting better performance and better battery life. So that's a huge plus as well. So guys, definitely recommend this update. If you have any comments or questions, uh, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to get back to you guys as soon as possible on those comments and questions. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with any uh, future content, definitely leave a like on today's video, get subscribed and hit that notification bell button. If you want updates on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. That is the QR code for my Twitter account pretty active there and you can always reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions or comments as well. So guys, thank you again for watching today's video. Again, links in the video description down below if you have any questions about wallpapers or any information about what I talked about today. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys in some future content. Until then, I hope you all are enjoying iOS 13.4.